Swaddling is a great tool to help your baby sleep better. Swaddling seems really straightforward and simple, but you will find as you get started swaddling that you will have a lot of questions. In this video, we will address those questions and more. Let's get started. First, a little pause. I want to introduce myself. Hello, my name is Valerie. I am the blogger at babywisemom.com. I am known as the Babywise Mom. I have four children who currently range in age from 10 to 17 years old. First, before you do something, you usually want to know like what are the benefits of this? How is this going to help me? Why do I want to bother with this? So let's discuss the benefits of swaddling. One big benefit is that it will help your baby to sleep better and that's huge. Your baby will fall asleep easier and take those longer naps. Your baby will be able to sleep through one and a half to two and a half hour long nap. Swaddling typically you start with a newborn and around three to four months old but that age range is a time when your baby has that moral reflex also called the startle reflex. You know when a baby is falling asleep and ooh, does that. This tool really helps prevent this from happening because your baby is all swaddled up and this really helps your baby stay on that great routine and eat at the correct intervals get enough feedings in a day and sleep is so important to development so having this swaddling help your baby sleep better it helps in so many facets it spills over beyond sleep so a common question people will have is is swaddling really necessary do I have to swaddle and it's not necessary like life will go on without it. And if your baby goes to sleep without being swaddled and takes a one and a half to two and a half hour nap, then it's definitely not necessary. Your baby's sleeping just fine without it. Those babies are few and far between. Most are going to sleep so much better with the swaddle. So if your baby's not taking that one and a half to two and a half hour nap, I'm going to say, yes, it's necessary. It's going to help with your sleep going to help establish great sleep habits and sleep routines and that just brings too many perks to even really discuss. There are a lot of different ways to swaddle a baby and you can use just a muslin blanket or a swaddle blanket. I really like using the swaddle blanket. With Caitlin, my second child, I use just a receiving blanket and I could swaddle her really well but she did not respond well to anyone else swaddling her and so I couldn't even feed her and then leave and have someone else put her down for a nap without accepting the fact that she wasn't going to sleep well. If I wanted her to take a good nap, I needed to swaddle her. With my third baby, I found swaddle blankets, which are fantastic because they are the same fit. Anyone can use them. There are so many different swaddle blankets out there and that can make it really overwhelming because you wonder which one should I get and they're not cheap. Some are a lot less expensive than others, but if you were to buy one of every blanket, that's a very expensive endeavor. So I would recommend asking friends if they have one you can borrow to try, or I would recommend just starting with the least expensive swaddle blanket out there and see if that one works, because if yes, then that is fantastic. Um, if you do research or ask in parenting groups, you're going to find that you get answers for every single blanket out there. So it's kind of hard to even ask around because really some, some really do work better for certain babies than others. But I would say because every blanket gets a positive review and there are people out there who love every blanket, then probably most of those blankets will work for most babies. Some really common popular swaddle blankets are the Halo, the Miracle Swaddle, the Love to Dream, the Wombi, the Weighted Sleep Swaddle from Dreamland, and my personal favorite was the Swaddle Me with my babies, and that, not coincidentally, is the least expensive swaddle blanket. So that's the one I tried, it worked, we stuck with it. Especially because I really like to have more than one swaddle blanket, because you can't wash the blanket while your baby's awake. Babies are only awake for 30 to maybe 60 minutes initially, and so, there's no way you're washing and drying that blanket between naps and you need to wash it. So even, even just two 
Like two's great, but two might mean you're doing that laundry really often because we all know newborns leak through diapers often. They spit up often. And so I really like to have a few options. And I also live in an area where the climate changes a lot. So I found it was nice to have like a light cotton blanket, but it was also nice to have those fleece blankets in the winter. So people don't just have questions, they also often have concerns about swaddling. Let's discuss those. The first concern people often have is, won't my baby become really dependent upon the swaddle in order to sleep? This is a very smart concern to have, but it isn't a concern you really have to worry about. Babies really come to this age where they stop sleeping well with the swaddle. So initially they sleep better with it, and then they get to this point where they sleep worse. So your baby will naturally want to drop the swaddle, which makes it really easy to do. With that said, that doesn't mean that every baby drops a swaddle in a very smooth way. So you might have some rough days of sleep, uh, but it won't be this long-term, long-lasting issue. Parents also often wonder and worry about, well, what about my baby's hands? My baby won't be able to use her hands or get to her hands. But the ages that you typically swaddle are in an age range when your baby doesn't have that hand control anyway. So you're swaddling your baby at a time when your baby can't get to her hands physically at all anyway. That skill is impossible until about three to four months old and that's typically when most babies drop the swaddle. Another smart concern is, is swaddling safe? It is safe as long as you use a safe blanket and you don't swaddle too loosely. A risk would be if you swaddle with just a, a loose blanket, a receiving blanket or a muslin blanket, and you leave it too loose so that your baby breaks out and then your baby's sleeping with loose bedding. We know that we want babies without any loose bedding, blankets, pillows, stuffed animals in the crib. So you want to make sure that swaddle is nice and tight. Parents also often have concerns about physical milestones. They wonder if their baby will be able to reach those physical milestones if they're swaddled for sleep. Yes, they will. Your baby is swaddled for sleep. Your baby's sleeping anyway, not practicing physical milestones. What you want to make sure of is that when your baby is awake during playtime, that you allow time for your baby to be on the floor, on a blanket, playing where, where your baby can practice those gross motor skills and those fine motor skills Development is delayed when babies spend all of their awake time confined. So if your baby spends all of her awake time in a front carrier or in a wrap or in a swing or in a bouncy chair, unable to move around on her own, that's when those developmental delays will happen. So you just need to make sure that you give blanket time, tummy time, and the opportunity for working on skills during awake time. If you do those things and there are no other causes for physical delay, then your baby will reach milestones within the normal milestone range. So what is the best age for swaddling? You can start anytime. Anytime you feel like your baby needs to be swaddled, you can start. If you have a one month old that you've never swaddled and you're watching this video and thinking, oh, that sounds like that would help my baby, go ahead and try it. Even if you have a two month old, three month old, if you feel like your baby is startling awake and needs that tighter comfort for sleep, go ahead and try it. You can start as young as newborn and continue on until you feel like your baby needs it. Most babies do drop it, as I have said, around three to four months old. If your baby needs to go longer, however, do it. My youngest child swaddled until she was around five or six months old and she met all of her milestones, all was well. She just needed that a little bit longer. What about dropping the swaddle? I do have a blog post with a lot of details on dropping the swaddle, but we'll give some highlights in this video. As with anything that you stop with the baby, you can either drop it all at once or you can do it slowly. And of course, the slowly is a milder way to go. It requires less risk. So I always recommend slowly unless you are just positive that your baby needs to stop swaddling, which can be, and then you can try dropping that swaddle. If naps go horribly, you can always re-swaddle again. That's a great thing. If you think, I think my baby's ready, but I'm not sure, you can always try it. If it doesn't work out, you still can swaddle for the next nap or the next day. It's just fine. 
a really great method to try, and this is a great way to test to see if maybe your baby is ready, is to start with just one arm left out of the swaddle. And you can try this as young as two months old or three months old. Just leave one arm out and see what happens. If your baby sleeps well, then there's a chance that your baby is ready to drop the swaddle, but it also might be your baby's ready to have just one arm out. Um, if the nap goes horribly, and naps typically don't go horribly, then I would re-swaddle. A great thing to watch for is how your baby's hand and arm control is going. You'll start to notice your baby getting better control over his limbs and being more intentional with his limbs. So once that happens, that's when you know like, okay, my baby might be ready to stop being swaddled for nap time. Even if your baby is ready to drop the swaddle, there's a great chance that it will take three to five days of kind of rough sleep before things get back to good after you drop the swaddle. So you always have to go with your instinct and think like, okay, is this nap going poorly because we're in this transition phase? And yes, it is good to drop the swaddle, but it's gonna take a couple of days before naps get back to good. Or is it, okay, too soon, baby's not ready. And you have to kind of wait and see. So you can try, I mean, if it's absolutely horrible, I would stop, stop the swaddle. I, mean, I would stop trying to drop the swaddle. But if it's just a, a little bad, but not horrible, then you might wanna stick with it three or five days and see. This is especially true if you have a compelling reason to drop the swaddle. If your baby has started rolling over while swaddled, then you probably are wanting to drop the swaddle, understandably, because you want your baby to have some arms to help move herself around or lift herself up if needed when she's on her stomach. So in those cases, you have to drop the swaddle even if your baby's not ready and you have to just wait for baby to become better at sleeping without the swaddle. And finally, what do you do with post-swaddle life? How do you dress your baby for sleep? There's a lot of options. One is just in your baby's normal clothes. Uh, if, you, if the room temperature is great and your baby doesn't need more warmth, then that's a great option. You can also move your baby into pajamas, which I would only do if your baby absolutely requires because uh, that's a lot of work for every nap. And I did have one baby who required that, but the rest just slept in their whatever they were wearing at the time. You can also use a sleep sack. So if your baby needs some extra warmth, a sleep sack is a great option. Okay, that does it for all the swaddling. I highly recommend you swaddle. My first child really, really hated the idea of being swaddled. He fought it. But if I, now knowing what I know now, if I had to do it over again, I would have worked harder to get him to like the swaddle because I think it would have helped him sleep a lot better in those newborn months. So I really encourage you to give it a real full try. Don't just stop because it seems like your baby doesn't like it. See if you can get your baby to sleep with that swaddle because your baby will probably sleep better with the swaddle even if your baby doesn't seem to like to be confined because that moral reflex exists whether your baby likes to be swaddled or not. So I highly encourage you give it a full try to help your baby sleep better. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will answer. And you can always watch my other videos and read my blog at babywisemom.com for lots more help. Thanks and have a great day.